Hey guys, I uh, wanted to make a quick introductory video to the next video series that I'm about to make. Uh, it's going to cover installing this beast, the 3.5 liter V6, into the second gen MR2. This is the swap I've been making parts available since uh, 2008 now, so a little over a decade. This video, is, it's something I've needed to put together for a long time now, either in video or written form, and the thing that's held me up a lot is there's so many options in different ways you can do things and what makes the most sense financially for one person is not what makes the most sense financially for one, another person. But now with the throttle guys having put one together, there's more interest than ever. So I really need to get to it. And this is as bolt together as you can get. And the important part is it's not the only way to do it. One big example here is I'm gonna be using the RAV4 harness. This is 2009 and earlier. And honestly, this is one of the harder harnesses to find right now. They didn't make that many V6 RAV4s. And at this point, we're looking at RAV4s that are at least 10 years old. But this dramatically simplifies the wiring harness. And when you consider that the alternatives right now are $600 in the US, and frankly, the quality of the work's been dropping dramatically, you can spend an awful lot on a wiring harness and do it yourself and avoid any of those problems. So we're gonna be covering with the RAV4 harness, which of course is gonna come with my RAV4 ECU also. So as I started talking about the RAV4 harness, we're going to go through this see, pin by pin. I'll provide a document also so that you can do it yourself. Don't be afraid. This is not going to be that much work. The other thing you're going to need with that is this kit, which is uh, essentially the second plug on the ECU. The wiring harness plugs into here for the engine. And then this is all the chassis integration stuff. And on the website, there's a PDF on there that includes the pinout for this thing. It's not the pinout to wire to your car. It's just the function of all of these. Next is this ECU. I make a custom tune for these guys. The immobilizer in here is disabled and there's some VVTI tweaks. The rev limiter is bumped to 7,200 RPM. The air fuel map is tweaked a lot because normally when you hit past the stock horsepower, uh, Toyota assumes that you're doing it with boost, so it cranks up the air to fuel ratio to like 10 to 1. It's, it's ridiculously rich, so that fixes that. And also the timing up above the stock power range uh, is dramatically changed because they're being super conservative, again, because they're assuming boost. And a little bit of timing, a little bit of timing changes down low also. With the 3.625 gears, I've had as much as 39 miles to the gallon. Uh, that's U.S gallons. And in town, I consistently get 26 miles to the gallons. So it's still pretty fantastic fuel economy. Next thing, the flywheel. This is the uh, famous Fidanza nine and a half pound. You don't need this. A lot of the V6 motors from Toyota, the 1MZ, the 3VZ, the 3MZ, they all use the same bolt pattern. So even though this never came in a manual, there's plenty of options out there. This is the one that I like. I would really prefer actually the ACT option, which is a full metal disc, but they don't make one with this bolt pattern. So this is the second best option. This is what I go for. You'll need some uh, flywheel bolts. This is actually different than the part number that most people on the internet spec. These are just a little bit longer, just a couple millimeters longer, and this matches the thread engagement in the crank that you would actually want with a stock application. I've never heard of anybody having the other ones fail, so it's not really that big of a deal, but they're the same price. Next thing we got is a motor mount. So I sell this. This goes right on the motor, right, right up here and it comes with bolts that match the stock application. They're flanged JIS bolts. So JIS means, you know, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, 10 millimeter, all of the tools that you're used to using on your MR2. There's not, not gonna be any of that 13 millimeter nonsense with this. The other thing we're gonna have is the ECU is drive-by wire. This adapts the I say the early Avalon pedal. Uh, the truth is there's a lot of Toyota pedals that'll bolt to this. Um, I don't even know the complete list, but I know if you get one from the early 2GR Avalon, it bolts right onto here. Uh, and by early, I mean 2009 and earlier. So I think it's uh, 2005, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, they made plenty of them. There's no shortage of them. They're about $25 on eBay. Next, we've got headers. These again, something that I sell. The East use tuned for them, so they work great on there. Uh, if you're in an emissions controlled area, uh, there are ways with minor modifications to get the catalytic converters to fit. And when I say emissions controlled area, I mean anywhere except California because California has the visual rules that there's no way you're going to pass. Uh, the only thing to consider, the front catalytic converter, if you're putting them on the car, they will interfere with the clutch slave that goes right here. So you're going to have to tweak the angle on this a little bit. It can be made to fit in that chassis, it's just not a direct bolt-on. Uh, if you do, I suggest you use the, uh, the Lotus units, uh, which, actually, which are not Lotus units at all. By the way, this is a Lotus motor, but 
there's no advantage to using the Lotus motor. Any old 2GR will work. We'll cover the differences that have been over the years. This is just some customer gave it to me in exchange for parts. We're gonna go back a little bit close to the flywheel. We're gonna cover the clutch. There's a lot of controversy out here. I love these guys. I've run them a lot. Never really had any issues with them. So uh, feel free to run anything you want. Basically, you can run anything that the uh, MR2 Turbo ran stock, right? Because you're using a flywheel that matches the pressure plate pattern and you're using the turbo transmission. So anything that'll do 300 foot pounds of torque or higher is gonna work in here. I like this guy, the TM1-HDG6. This is a ceramic one. They have the TM1-HDSS, which is an organic clutch if you prefer organic. Not gonna dwell too much on that. Next, this is a stock fuel filter, but the neat thing up here, this is something that Alex Wilhelm makes available. He does a lot of things to support the swap. There's some more parts over there that I'll cover in a second. Essentially, he takes the radium unit, which you can actually buy straight from him, save on shipping. He makes an adapter that makes it so it bolts right to the top of the fuel filter, and then you've got your return line, and your feed line to the engines. I don't have the rest of the parts here for the fuel lines, but we'll cover that as we go forward in the videos. Uh, this is a super slick solution. It's all contained and essentially we're gonna add a little filter right here so that gunk doesn't get up in there in the road and you don't need a fuel pressure gauge in your engine bay. This is just, it's a Bosch three bar regulator and it's just gonna work. That's the whole theme of this thing is the whole thing just, it starts, it runs, it drives, it feels great and it does it every time you try. Let's see, next thing we're gonna do, this is Again, Alex Wilhelm's solution. Um, I actually have a different solution for this on my website, but since there's a really good chance that we're gonna be stuffing some other things in the Sanjin Bay in the future, we're gonna do some R&D together on video. Um, I wanted to go with this because it frees up the engine bay. So this sits on the engine right on the backside of the engine right here. The issue is the factory Toyota MR2 has the filler about here relative to the engine. And if you put a 2GR in there, there's nowhere to fill the coolant. So this adds a coolant fill to it, works great, keeps the area free. You do have to send the water neck into him to get the modification done. The other advantage to this is my solution was designed about 10 years ago and the water necks in the MR2 are plastic and they've been having some high failure rates lately. So if yours has failed, my solution won't work, but this will. So something to keep in mind. Next, we need to get air to the engine. The tune, uh, you can buy two ways today. That might change in the future. I think I might only support this, but for now you can buy it with this or the stock air box. But this is a six inch velocity stack. The uh, mass airflow sensor fits in here. And this unit is machined to a very precise diameter. So there's no mass airflow calibration issues. This has made a huge difference in the response of the engine. It's just so much snappier and it gives a little bit of extra power but mostly it's all response this has helped tremendously um, that comes with uh, one of these uh, air filters it's a six inch filter that fits in the engine bay nicely now in the name of making this as bolt together as possible you really just need a 45 degree hose to connect the throttle body to this but alex makes something available with a little bracket. Uh, again, that's Alex Wilhelm. You can see in the description for his link. Uh, it's 45, I think it's 45. And it's got room for your crankcase ventilation right up here. And it comes with a really simple bracket. So if you don't want to fabricate anything, this is available. So in the name of uh, making this as simple as possible for everybody, I bought one of these from him. Next thing you'll need, Alex makes a Y pipe. If you use the Burke tail section, this guy, my headers, you don't have to do a single bit of exhaust work. If you need catalytic converters, you're gonna need to make your own. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is the location of this port is a bit unfortunate. Alex really only intended for this to be used with the E153. If you've got the S54, which does bolt to this, the problem you're gonna have is this port hits the CV boot. So you're gonna have to pay a local fabricator if you can't do it yourself to move the port over. Maybe Alex will change his design on these in the future. Next thing you're gonna need, this is a helical set. There's a hole right on the motor. It's not threaded, but conveniently, it's just the right size to run one of these taps in there and put that in there. And that gives you one more mounting point for the transmission. And it's already a little short on mounting points, so you really should use that. One other thing we're gonna be adding, so this is not necessary, but these cars are getting old. 
they're all antiques now. Um, so the shift cables, if you still have the stock rubber boots, this is some spherical bearings that I make. It gives you a nice crisp shift. We're gonna be installing that also. Something else we'll cover, again, because these cars are so old. The CVs, you can't really buy them new anymore. Well, there's rumors that somebody might be making reproductions. Um, if you know where, where they're available, just post it down below. But Fabeast, Fabeast, however you pronounce that, uh, they've got this part number right here. This is for the Camry application, but it's the same joints on the MR2. And this is a really nice kit that basically replaces everything on the inner side, which is what usually has problems. Um, so it's everything from the, the joint itself, the CV joint, to the grease you'll need, the metal part of the boot, the rubber part of the boot, and also includes you know, your clip to retain and that No, it's not cork. In the stock application, it's cork. This looks like it's a paper version of that gasket, but either way, it'll work fine. There's a whole lot of cars out there running without them, and you need something there, otherwise you'll lose all your grease. The other thing we're going to do um, to get a little bit more power, and we can actually thank, uh, again, this goes back to Alex. Uh, Alex and I worked together a lot on this latest tune. He did a lot of the dyno work, and I did the tune work. It worked really well together. One of the things he did is he bought all three intake manifolds that were available for this application. By the time you're watching this, there might be more, but at the time, there were three. And this is the one that we called number two. And number two is the one you want. It makes a little bit more power at the top. And the way you tell it apart is, do you see ah, this crease right here? That is the one you're looking for. The only one that's got that is the number two. Now some, there's a couple versions of this. This one only has one port, which is all you need. Some of them have another port coming out here. You would just leave it capped. This is out of the Venza, but it showed up in a lot of different cars. Don't hold out for the Venza one because I think they made like four Venzas. That's all the parts we're going to use. Um, there's going to be little odds and ends that I forgot and we'll cover that in the video as things go on. This is the motor that you're looking for. A couple things to answer about it. Let's see. See these hoses right here. This is because this is an oil cooler engine and if you have <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to Alex. Um, if you have an old cooler engine, the coolant manifold you have to use has a port out here that is where this uh, second bottom line here hooks up. Uh, so make sure you send the right one to Alex for him to modify so that you have the right port on there. The oil cooler, you can see it down here. It probably doesn't show up very well on camera, but right down here. Honestly, it's nice, but this was designed for things like a Highlander towing several thousand pounds behind it through the mountains. Uh, I've tracked this engine without an oil cooler before and really haven't had any issues. Now, the truth is, if you're going to be tracking it and tracking it a lot, yeah, you should probably go for it. But if you're just using it on the street, don't bother. This makes the engine a lot harder to find and a lot more expensive, and it's just not necessary. Application-wise, really get it from any application. Um, the difference is there's a metal version of the line that it's actually not even on this motor right now, um, but I will show it during the videos, is connects right here to right here. It provides all of the oil pressure for the VVTI system. The original line had a rubber piece in the middle here, and that rubber piece is known for letting go, and it's a lot of flow, so you'll end up with no oil in your motor, and then it's catastrophic. Um, the other thing that was done is if you have the oil cooler, See these lines of rubber here also. Um, there is a service part that, as of the filming of this, is not available on my website, but I hope to make it available really soon. Um, there's an all metal version of these lines also, and that fixes that. But frankly, it's not expensive. Just get a good deal on the motor and go with it. That should be it on the 2GR. Other thing I wanted to say is there's been a lot of new guys here to the channel, and I really appreciate it. I've got almost a thousand subscribers, which I know is tiny compared to some channels, but it, I never would have expected a thousand people to care about what I do here. So um, I'm going to start doing more and more videos and let me get something. So this is something else uh, that you'll be seeing soon. This is the 2ARFE that I had um, 
In fact, the video that I just published with all of the swap into the MR2 Spider, it was this engine. Now what happened, the rear main failed, which took out the clutch. It took out the clutch. If you see the, the friction material, like there's a little bit of friction material left there and a little bit like this, this is wasted. But that's what happens when you soak it down and you're trying to do 7,000 RPM on the track. It just doesn't work. Though, actually, it does work. This actually brought us home to the pits. But my goal is the MR2 Spider. it seems that there's a big desire around the 240 wheel horsepower mark. I've got some camshafts for this. This is going to go together. Um, it's going to take a little bit, but I'm going to try to video it. I should have videoed, actually, the disassembly. And we're going to cover what I'm going to do to it. And hopefully at the end, um, I'm going to do what I can to get it over that 240 number. If I end up close to the same horsepower, not the same torque, we'll never get three and a half liters worth of torque. If I get close to the same horsepower number as this, um, then I'll probably see what I can do about pushing it even further. Uh, maybe using the stroker that's available. The, there's a 2.7 liter crank available for this block out of the 1AR. Very few 1ARs got sold in the US, so getting one is a little tricky, but you can get the crank straight from the dealer for 600 bucks. So we'll see. Version one's not gonna start with that. Um, though I might start with uh, forged connecting rods and forged pistons. We'll see. <coughs> I haven't made all the decisions yet. So uh, that's something else to look forward to. Those might be interspaced inside of the uh, 2GR install also. So yeah, um, help me out. Subscribe. Click that notification. Yeah, I don't know, it feels silly saying that, but um, it helps out. And if there's enough people that want this, it helps out. This thing ain't monetized yet, but if there's enough of you that care about the kind of stuff I do, maybe someday in the future I'll monetize. Hey, I even wore a dead cat for this video to improve the, the audio. See you guys later.